Hi everyone, this is Jim. I wanted to uh, talk about different uh, shapes in this video, good shapes and bad shapes. There, there are some shapes, some patterns of stones that occur so often that they uh, have names. And I've already shown one of these in an earlier video. Uh, let's step forward to it. This is the, uh, the famous uh, tiger's mouth. I guess it looks like the, the mouth of a tiger yawning wide open. And uh, you can see, well, it's Black's turn to move, so I'll give this example with Black. These three stones protect um, this space in the middle, say on E4, if you place a stone there, then it can get captured. So it doesn't quite form an eye because there are various ways that it can be invaded or approached. For example, uh, Black, if he wants to try and undermine this formation, can approach from this direction. And then if uh, White doesn't block here, um, then, then Black can invade and, and try and cut those stones apart like that. So um, it's not like an invulnerable structure, but it's sometimes useful. Uh, one use of it which I don't know if I mentioned before, but um, say you have a, uh, a wall. I guess I'll start with black. Um, the, well, I guess uh, you have two walls that are, um, say, coming under fire, and they're not completely connected. So, oops, <laughs> that was a misclick. Uh, here and here. So these, these walls composed of three black stones are under fire from white. And uh, you can solidly connect them by placing a stone here at uh, K8. And that uh, connects those stones and prevents an invasion, at least uh, directly there. But you can also protect that uh, connection in two other ways. You could place a stone here at, um, at J9 or here at, um, or here at uh, H, H8. And they both have the same effect. If white tries to invade here, um, then you can capture that stone. So it effectively um, prevents white from invading there and, and joins those groups together because there's no way that white can break them apart if black is careful. And uh, maybe more useful, the stone over here at H8 or up here at uh, J9 might be more useful than the stone uh, here at the corner. Uh, maybe it's influencing things in this direction or over in this direction. So just something to keep in mind. And it's related to the uh, tiger's mouth because this these, these three stones here in the corner sort of form a little tiger's mouth. So that's an example. Um, let's go back um, to where we were. Um, after the tiger's mouth, there's another good shape. We're, we're going to start, I guess, with good shapes. <laughs> and this is known as the bamboo joint. And that consists of uh, uh, two sets of two stones that are next to each other, uh, but separated by one column. And um, uh, one good thing about these is uh, well, they may like like the tiger's mouth. They they do have the beginnings of an eye space. You could imagine forming an eye there. Now they are subject to invasion, but uh, uh, what's good is that they can always be connected. So if black invades here, then white can connect there, and vice versa. If uh, you know white, if black invaded on K4, then uh, white could block on K5 and connect. So um, so without placing any more stones, leaving these two. Uh, groups of stones just like that, they're automatically connected. Um, and so you don't have to worry about creating a connection. And then um, you can further build on that shape uh, sometimes with uh, these uh, additional shapes. Um, yeah, adding a couple of other stones. <laughs> I'm just going too quick. I meant to do it one at a time. Yeah, step, step by step. Okay. And uh, you can see another way of looking at this. We, we have the bamboo joint with uh, end caps, and we, we've got the beginning of some territory here, um, although it's still not completely safe. I mean, these are not uh, true eyes just yet because the opponent can invade at these corners, so it takes a few more stones to completely secure that. And it's only one eye in the middle, so it's not like it's a huge structure. But it's uh, pretty solid. It, it can't be. It takes several moves from your opponent to, to break it apart, and uh, you can use this as a, a base, as it were, you can sort of extend off from one of these structures in various directions. And the other thing about this uh, shape here, if you look at it, it's actually um, two tiger's mouths back to back. This is a tiger's mouth and this is a ta tiger's mouth. So you can think of that in two different ways. These are as a, a, a bamboo joint with two end caps or as a two tiger's mouths. Okay, those were the good shapes. And then there's another shape here um, that I wanted to show you, which is uh, thought to be a bad shape. And this shape is called the empty chair. So you've got these three stones just sitting there. 
um, next to each other. And uh, it's important that uh, there's no stone here that they're surrounding. They're just sitting there surrounding empty space. And um, if you compare that to the bamboo joint, you might say it's a little less efficient. It's, it's trying to control the space here. For example, the black stones look like they're trying to control E5, but it, it's still not completely surrounded. Uh, for example, white could actually place a stone there and then escape. So it doesn't, uh, it does not completely surround uh, the the space if it's trying to control it. And uh, and these stones are kind of tightly grouped, so they don't control a large area. Their their influence is limited. So um, so that's one of the characteristics of, uh, of what you might consider to be a, a bad shape is that it's um, a little bit chunky. Um, if you have a clump of stones, or clumpy maybe is the better word, you have a clump of stones that don't have a, a well-defined eye and they're sort of close together, um, then they're, they're, um, they're not efficient. So they're, they're not controlling a lot of space and you've used a lot of stones to make them up. And they also may come under attack. It may be possible for your opponent to surround them. Um, but it's not always a bad thing. So I, I just wanted to mention that if you see this uh, shape, uh, and you're about to make a shape like that in your in one of your own games. You might want to try some other move, maybe place that third stone somewhere else to see if you can have it uh, extend a little further out and still uh, achieve whatever objective you're trying to achieve with that stone. But there are cases you see it played in many games. Oh, let's see. I, um, this was just one example of how, say, these three stones are controlling a small amount of space, but these two stones from your opponent are actually controlling a much bigger amount of territory and you have a similar situation down here. So, so these stones are more efficient, although they could be cut apart potentially, so they have some weaknesses too. Um, there's uh, one example though that I have seen uh, where the empty chair shows up, and uh, I've seen this in, in quite a few professional games. Uh, you see this formation here. It looks like an empty chair, but there's a couple other stones. Uh, involved here. And actually, this is a pretty solid formation. So this is a, an example of, of uh, basically uh, black is well on the way to forming an eye shape here. He just needs a couple more stones and he has a, a complete eye there that can't be invaded. Um, and uh, and so you can see the, the, um, the empty chair is actually doing a useful job there with the help of these other stones. Maybe it's not the most efficient way to, to control that space. You could do it with just four stones instead of five. But uh, if you go from this four stone formation, this diamond, to, uh, to an eye, you know, you're going to pass through some stages where you have uh, what look like uh, empty chairs there as you try and fill it in. But uh, now you've got an eye here. And if this were connected to a group that had a second eye, then this would be uh, completely safe. So I just wanted to point that out that there are no uh, hard and fast rules here. And uh, let's just go forward and see if I had anything else in this diagram. Um, no, that was it. Okay, so that's uh, just what I wanted to say about the shape. So you're just trying to use your stones as efficiently as possible. So watch out for groups that are a little too clumpy and uh, try and make things like the, uh, the bamboo joint and the tiger's mouth that are uh, well connected or easy to connect and difficult to split apart. Okay, uh, let's see if we can uh, get a game here. Oh, we got a game here. Onions. Onions plays in the center. Okay, this might be an interesting game. And he takes one of the corners here. I'm going to take this corner down here. And then I'm going to approach his, his second corner here. Yeah, stone in the middle is, is kind of a grab for uh, space in the center of the board. But often the center space can be um, invaded later. So I'm going to try and secure some corner space. And uh, is this, uh, can he, can he split my stones apart here? If I go here and he goes there, I can surround it and capture it. So I don't think he can split those apart too easily. Maybe he can... Uh, Okay, I need to connect there. And I can extend along here. So I'm, I'm getting space along the side and in this corner here, I guess. 
If he goes in here, I can capture it. Yes, he's jumping ahead. Going to try and intercept this. And I'm going to block there. So this is not very much space. This is kind of a low line, a low lying area here. And I think this group is still safe. If he cuts here, I can block and then capture that stone if it tries to run. So, okay, so I think this group is safe. And then I want to expand up the sides or maybe grow out from this stone over here. And, ah, he's doing something interesting. So he's trying to invade my corner. Let's start by splitting that group, that stone off from his fellow, from his fellow stones there. Okay, yeah, he can go over the top. And then I was going to split like this. So this stone is isolated. And then I need to extend because he's attacking this guy. But I think uh, he loses this stone, is that the net of all that? My attack is, is just quicker than his. I wonder if he could play b4, and then I block it a4. So he's going there. Okay. I'm going to capture that stone. which will secure these stones, uh, these three stones on C5, B5, and B4 are, you know, in danger of getting surrounded, maybe. But if I capture that stone, then they're, then they're well connected to the rest of my groups. And I need to keep extending here. But I don't think he can run away. I couldn't block because he would then connect with the stone on A3. I couldn't block it at, uh, at C2, for example. Let's see, so but if but if he keeps extending, I can still keep extending myself. Eventually, he runs into the wall, and then I capture his stone. So, okay, so he goes there, he gives up on that. Um, so rather than take that right away, I want to defend this corner. And uh, once I get uh, a secure setup here, then I'll extend out to the side and attack this untouched corner over here. I also want to extend up on the side on the right. The top and the right are unclaimed territory. So you know, let's go there now. Okay, let's go inside once again. Interesting. So he's can I'm going to let him have this stone. That's a, a sacrificial stone, so I can get more space in the corner here. And um, I think I'll start extending along the side here. I can also approach along this side. Let's make sure I don't get uh, cut apart there. here. There, I can extend some more. And I'll, I'll meet up with this uh, side over here pretty soon. <laughs> okay, so he wants to go that way. Let's um, think about this. If I go here, I think I want to go this way so that I can connect up with this, these stones over here. Yeah, 
and he probably needs to do something to stave this stone. I, I could play um, L6 and then capture that stone. So he could extend. Yeah, he extends that way. So I'm going to extend this way. That's not an extension. That's a diagonal move, rather. Okay, so I've got um, two corners. Let's um, wonder. He plays a stone here, and I play here. He goes there. I play here. He goes, I can capture it. And if he plays a stone here, I can connect. He comes in here. I can block. If he comes here. I can block. Block. Capture. Okay. I think I'm okay here. I might want to play one more stone, but it, it seems like there's there's bigger bigger fish to fry elsewhere on the board. So let's take more space over here. Okay, now I need to connect so he doesn't invade. That's important. Important to be aware of your weaknesses so you can respond appropriately. Oh, so this will be an interesting battle if he gets all of the uh, inside and I get all of the outside. Usually the territory around the outside, even even if you just have uh, little bits of it. Uh, oops, that was a misclick. I meant to play at B, uh, B10. Sorry about that. Okay, he didn't he didn't take advantage of that. He could have invaded and gotten some more space that way. And I'm just going to keep keep grabbing more space here. If he cuts, I Block. Oh, actually, this doesn't work. That was a bad move. I need to play at um, F12 because he, if he plays at F12 now, he's he's threatening this stone. And I don't have time to block. So my mistake. That loses a point or two of territory here. Yeah, he spotted that. Um, let's see. Can I extend? He just extends. Go here. He cuts. Uh, let's stop him from doing any more damage anyway. So now let's um, play here, grab a little more space over here. Okay, now I need to connect, make sure I don't get uh, cut off there. So we're getting near the end here. Okay, so he is going to try and run with those stones. I don't think it works. I think I can always stay in a position where I'm ready to capture them. Maybe, yeah, maybe he can play here as a tempo move at uh, F2. Okay, let's capture those stones now before I get into trouble here. <laughs> and this stone over here is dead. I'm not going to bother to capture it unless he tries to expand in some way. He can play at, um, okay, yeah, so he filled in there. play here and then I can play at uh, J. 
J13, I think that will complete my territory. Yeah, so he played there instead. He's got to fill in at H13. He didn't do that, so well, let's take it. Oh, he's got a, um, a weak group here, too. I, I can play at uh, B8 and capture those three stones. I wonder, uh, yeah, that's probably been sitting there for a while. Did not notice that. Yeah, so he fills in there. So rather than filling in here, I'll grab these stones and, and uh, let him have that one back. That's a co-situation there. That's a co-fight back and forth with those stones. But I'm giving it up. He can have that if I can grab these stones over here. It was worth it for me. Well, we'll see uh, how close the game is at the end. I'm not really sure. I mean, it, it looks so impressive, all the space he has in the center. But uh, my experience has led me to believe that the space around the edge is actually uh, more important. Um, so is there anything else I can attack here? I can place a stone here, force him to respond, or here. Yeah, if I place a stone here, it's a double Atari. It's attacking this stone, and it's attacking these three stones. And he defended that one. And now I'm attacking this stone at uh, C8. He passed! <laughs> okay, he resigned. Yeah, I think passing was a mistake. But I kind of wanted to count, so let's see if we can get this um, estimate score thing going. White by 50, I don't believe that. Because black has all these stones. Well, anyway, yeah, I don't know what that estimate score thing was doing. But I did break through over here, so I stole a bunch of his territory. Um, let's see if we can back up to the game. Let's back up a few moves. Oh, I can't... Uh, it's got that highlighting on. That'll make it too confusing. Anyway, yeah, it would be interesting to pause the video and count the stones and see who was ahead at the end there. Um, okay, uh, that's it for this video. See you guys later. Bye.